All right, so now that you got Boto3 installed, let's uh, look at the documentation for Boto3. So I'm just going to Google Boto3, and we're just going to try to do something simple just to make sure it's working, basically. So if we go to Quick Start, so we've already installed it. We didn't use pip, we used conda, but you can use pip if you want. And now they're saying configuration, and this is where they're saying, like, use AWS configure to set your, your credentials. Actually, that's a good point. Let me show you this AWS uh, credentials. So there's basically like a hierarchy of how Boto3 uses or how it finds your credentials. So no, this isn't it. Boto3. So you can see the, like Boto3 tries to look in all these different places for credentials. So it looks, if you actually pass the information like directly in Python with Boto client or with the session object, then it checks environment variables, then it checks the shared credentials and the AWS config. So this is how it's getting our information. And let me show you one more time, or I actually don't even think I showed you, but this is where that folder gets created. So when we run AWS configure, it it puts the information in this file. So another way of updating it, instead of running AWS configure, you can just actually edit this file and, and paste in the, the new stuff, the new uh, credentials. But anyway, um, and you see the last thing it's gonna try to do is instance metadata service. So that's uh, if you're on an EC2 instance and you have the correct IAM role, it'll uh, it'll work. Uh, any, anyway, let's let's get started, oops. Uh, browse as guest. All right, back to Boto3. And using Boto3. Okay. So to use Boto3, you must first import it and tell it what service you're going to use. So, all right, the first thing we're going to use is S3. So we have this new S3 variable. Now that you have an S3 resource, you can make requests and response. All right, so this, let's try this. This is confirmation that Boto3 is actually working and it can find our stuff. So this should print out the same thing as this, right? If it's configured correctly, we should see this. Okay, cool. So now we have Boto3 and it's working with our AWS account. So that's awesome. So let's just move on here. So this is showing us how to upload a new file. Uh, I don't want to do that yet. I want to first uh, list all the objects. Oh, you know what? I forgot to show you the things we were going to do. So <laughs> connect to AWS. So we did that. Install Boto3. Did that. List buckets. Did that. So now we want to list objects in a particular bucket and we can filter them. So it's a little, this website's a little tricky to navigate. Um, if you go to like available services, I think this is where you would find S3 and then you would find all the S3. Um, here we go. Yeah, so S3 client. So Clients like the older way of using Boto3. We want to use something called a resource. So th you noticed like in the um, quick start, they were using this Boto3 resource and that's like one of the first things we did here. Um, but these are all the things we can do. So create bucket, um, but let's just Google Boto3 how to list objects in bucket. All right, let's go to trusty stack overflow. Um, so here, this is what we want. One way. Okay, there's a good example. Let's see what else. So this guy has everything we need right here. So I'm going to just paste all that. Now, bucket name. So actually, let's not get rid of what we had because we want to print our bucket name because we want to use our bucket name as a variable here. So we don't need these two lines. So we're going to print 
bucket name. So instead of hard coding bucket name, we're just going to use the variable bucket dot name. And let's just say here, I'm going to say bucket. I'm going to put the bucket dot name. If you've ever seen this notation, these F strings, basically you can make a string and then put curly braces in it. And if you put an F in front of the string, you can put whatever variable you want inside these curly braces. Um, so it's kind of the newer way of string formatting. Um, all right. So now it's going to, so what it's doing, it's looping through this S3 object, the S3 buckets dot all, and it's printing all the buckets. And then within that, within that loop, we're looping again inside a particular bucket and looping all of, or uh, printing out all the, the objects that are in there. So let's give this a try. So it should basically print out all the objects in all the buckets. So let's see what happened there. Actually, let me, this might be a little clear if I say print same thing down here. Bucket, and then let me say key. File.key, and let's say, we don't need this one. All right, let's try this. All right, let's go to the top. And you can see the bucket is this and the key is that. Buckets, this, keys. That. So this is all the first bucket and all the objects in that first bucket. There's a lot of them, it seems. And it should switch over because we have two buckets. So now it's going to the second bucket and it's printing out everything in this bucket. Cool, so that that's awesome. That's what we want. Um, yeah, I think that's a good um, stopping point for this video and in the next video we're going to just uh, get a little more in depth with this and filter stuff um, just see what else we can do all right